Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Forbidden Stars. This game isn't made anymore, unfortunately. I was very lucky to find someone that was willing to sell it for a reasonable price, because personally I think this is a fantastic game. Explaining it to you won't be that complicated, but playing it will require your own strategic thinking at its best level. Here's how it goes. You are going to play up to 8 rounds. If at any point one player manages to get enough of these small objective tokens, the game is over and that player wins the game. You need to get as many of these as there are players in the game. So for example, if there are 3 players, then you need 3 of these tokens. And of course you need to get the tokens that have your own symbol on it. If no one manages to get enough objectives after 8 rounds, then the player who at least has the most will be the winner. But again, you play a maximum of 8 rounds, and if at some point you have collected enough of these tokens, you are the winner. Next, what is a round? That is 3 steps. Step 1. Every player places these tokens on the board to plan all their actions. Step 2. The tokens are flipped over one by one to perform the actions. Step 3. You get resources, you do an event card and you reset stuff on the game board before moving on to the next round. So again, plan your actions then do your actions and finally get resources and do events. That is how a round goes. Let me go back and explain it in a bit more detail. Step 1. Planning your actions. Each player has 8 of these action tokens. There are 4 actions to choose from and you can do each one twice. Starting with the first player, each person places one of these tokens on one of these spaces in the middle of each tile. You place it face down so no one sees what you've planned. You can choose which token you want to place and you can choose where you want to place it as long as there is at least one of your own player figures in that area or next to it. Like a spaceship or a factory so you can't place a token on a tile where you have nothing and not even something of yours next to that tile. You can put it, you can put it somewhere where there's no token yet, or you can put it on top of another token. Doesn't matter if it's one of yours or from another player. Just put it somewhere. You keep going around the table placing one token when it's your turn. As soon as everyone has placed all the tokens, this part of the round is over. Just keep the rule in mind that you place these tokens on a tile where you have something of yours, or at least it's next to a tile where you own something. Step 2. Starting with the first player, you choose one of your own tokens and flip it over. When it's your turn and none of the tokens that you can see have your own player symbol on it, then you have to pass. You may only flip over tokens that are yours. Before I explain more, this is a good time to point out that this is how the game goes and why it's so complicated. You plan your actions from back to front, because the token that you place first is somewhere on the bottom, so that will be the action you get to do last. Not only do you have to plan what you want to do with each action in reverse, you also have to try to predict what the other players will do. Anyway, moving on. When it's your turn, you flip over one of your own tokens. And then you have two choices. Either you perform the action, or you take the token and place it on top of your own event deck, these cards. 
then you don't do the action, but at the end of the round you get to take as many cards as there are tokens on this deck. I'll get to that later. So again, when you flip over a token, you can either do the action or pass on doing the action and just place the token on your own deck of cards here. You can place as many tokens on it as you like. If you choose to do the action, you remove the token when you're done. When every token on the board has been removed, this part of the round is over. I'll explain later what each action can do. But first, step 3. The end of each round. That always goes in a specific order. The first thing you do is check to see if anyone owns a planet where there is one of their own objective tokens. This is how you win the game. If you are on a planet where there's a little token with your symbol on it, take it and keep it on your own player board. After that, every player can take resources. It's called material. For every planet that you control, you look at the number in the green cogwheel on the left side. That's how much material you get. Instead of taking tokens, you just turn up your own dial to a higher number. If you get 5 material in total, just turn the dial up by 5 numbers. You can spend those in the next round. And only the numbers in green. Any other symbols on the planet are not resources you can take right now. When every player has taken all their resources, you look at the game board to see if there are any plastic figures that have been placed on their side. This can happen during a battle. If there are any, now is the time to place them upright again. They're all fixed and good to go for the next round. Now comes a more important part. The event cards. Each player has their own deck of cards. They look like this. For each token that you have placed on top of the deck, you can take one card. But no matter how many cards you take, you may only choose one to keep and resolve. When you've chosen a card, just read what it says and follow the instructions. Some cards will have a one-time bonus and then go back in the deck. Some cards stay on the table to give you a permanent bonus. The cards will speak for themselves. After you've done what it says on the card, you still need it for one last thing. Each event card shows this on the right side. That is for these things on the game board, the warp storms. These are just things that block the pathway. Players can't step over a warp storm. You take one that hasn't been moved yet and then place it somewhere else based on how the event card tells you to move it. When you've put it in a different spot, flip it over to indicate it's been moved to make sure another player doesn't accident accidentally move the same one. It's also possible that you have zero tokens on your own event deck. In that case, you don't get to do an event, but you still must move a warp storm. In that case, just take the top card, ignore what it says, and follow only the warp storm instructions. Either way, when you're done, put all the cards back in the deck and shuffle it. The first player goes first and then you go clockwise around the table. When every player has done this, the round is over. Move the round marker forward by one space and start the next round. Pass the first player token to the person on your left. Let me quickly repeat that. Step 3 of each round is... If you've managed to be in charge of a planet where there is an objective token of yours, you take it. Get resources, put plastic figures back up, and deal with the event cards and warp storms. I've got only two more things to explain and then we're already done. What are all the actions you can do and how do you deal with a combat? 
I'll start by explaining the actions first, but you also have this little information card you can look at if you need a reminder during the game. You have this action token with the wings on it, the dominate action. If you play this, then you can take the other resources from a planet that you own on the tile where you've placed this. You remember that on the left side of a planet it shows the number in green, but you get that at the end of the round. But there's also stuff on the right. You get those items when you use the dominate action. You have these yellow cog wheels. Then you can take a token that shows the same icon. You can spend those to buy new figures or upgrades. You have this blue hammer thing. Just take a token with that on it from the supply. I'll tell you what these are in a moment. And you have this icon of a flag. Then just take this token with the same flag on it. You can use these during a battle. If a planet happens to show the same icon with the wings, that means you can choose which one of these three tokens you want to take. The yellow, the blue or the flag. After you've done that, this dominate action is also the only time when you get to do your own special power. Each player has their own character sheet. In the middle it says what special thing you can do when you do the dominate action. Just read what it says on your sheet. Next action. This one th with the factory and the arrow on it. This is the deploy action. When you do this one, you can place things on the board. You can first choose to place one or more of the plastic figures in your own color. Of course, you can only do that on the tile where you place this action. You can only do that if you own a factory there. This is a factory and you know it's yours because you placed your own token under it. Also, it's possible you can't just build anything you like. If you look at your own character board, on the left side you see, uh, on the right side, you see an overview of what you can build and what it costs. But on the left of that, it also shows those yellow icons with a zero in it, and a one, and a two, and a three. That tells you what you are allowed to build. For that, you have to look at how many cities you own on the game board. This pointy thing is a city. If you don't have any, you can only build things from the zero section. If you have one city, then you can build everything from the one section or lower, and so on. But this is also where those little blue hammer tokens can come in handy. If you have one, you can spend it to build something that is one level higher than you are, just for now. If you have two of these tokens, you can spend them both to build something that's two levels higher than what you normally are. The price for everything you want to build is written right next to it in green. You can either pay for it by going down on your dial or spend these little yellow token. Each token is worth two resources. And of course you can only build something of yours if it's on a spot where another player isn't in charge. You can only build on a space where you already control it or if it's empty. Also only build on the tile where you have the action token. You can't just build something on the other side of space. That's the first thing you can do. Build one of the figures in your own color. And after that, you can choose to also build a structure. One of these grey buildings. Again, the price for each building is written on your own character sheet. And then you can place that building on the tile where you place your action token. 
you can only build on a planet that is empty or already yours. And very important, you can only place a grey building on a planet that does not already have a grey building. There can never be two grey buildings on a planet. Don't forget to place your token underneath it to indicate it's yours. This is what you do when you choose a deploy action. First maybe build your colored figures and after that build grey structures. One last thing, there is a limit uh, to how many ground troops there can be on a planet. Each planet shows some little skulls under it. That shows how many plastic colored figures there can be. When you build them there, you are allowed to go over the limit, but at the end of the round you have to remove them if there are still too many. Two more to go. You have this token with the two cards on it, the strategize action. You use this to get upgrades for yourself. You can choose between getting one upgrade from this deck that gives you special powers or you can choose one upgrade for your combat deck to make you stronger in a battle. In the top left corner of each card it shows which level you have to be and what the price is. After you've bought an upgrade for the game just place it open in front of you if you bought an upgrade for your combat cards, that works a bit differently. On the other side of your player board you have your combat deck. It's always exactly 10 cards. So when you buy an upgrade, you have to take the two cards that are the same. Every upgrade comes in two cards. And then you add those to your own combat deck. But since you added two cards, you also have to remove two cards. Choose one of the cards and then remove that one and the other card that is exactly the same. You can put those two cards in the upgrade deck. When you're done, shuffle your combat deck and place it next to you. That's it. The strategize action is buy upgrades. But it has one little nice extra. When you've done this action, you don't take back the action token, but you can place it on your own event deck. So you also get to play at least one event card at the end of the round. And the last action token you can play, this one with the skull on it, the advance action. This is the one that lets you move your own figures around on the board. As long as it's not through a warp storm, of course. You can't move over that. But when you place this action token on a tile, you can move around your figures that are already there. And you can bring over figures that are adjacent to the tile where you've placed the action. Spaceships are always on spaces where there is no planet and ground troops are always only on planets. If two planets are right next to each other then ground troops can just walk over. If there's space in between planets then you need to have a spaceship there to let the ground troops move. Also keep that limit in mind. Look at the skulls. You can go over the limit, but if there are still too many at the end of the round, you have to remove your troops from the planet. But again, when you use the advance action, you can move your own colored figures. That brings us to the last thing to explain. Combat. If you play this advance action, you can also start a battle. You can only do one battle per turn and you only combat one other player. And here's how that goes. First you do a battle in space. If there are spaceships from another player there, they fight first. Step 1. Look at how many spaceships you have there. 
and then look at your own character sheet to see how many dice you are allowed to use. These black icons show you how many you are allowed to take. You can have a maximum of 8 dice. When you've counted up how many you can use, just take the dice from the supply and roll them. Only once. The other player does the same. If you've played this token, then you are the attacker and the other player is the defender. It's better to organize the dice, group each result together. Step 2. After you've both rolled dice, you take your own combat deck. Give it a shuffle and deal yourself five cards. The battle is going to be th three turns at most. If one player at some point has no more figures left because everything was destroyed, then the other player is the winner. If after three turns both players are still standing, then whoever has the most of these icons is the winner. But first, you both pick your first card to play. The attacker goes first, reveal the card. Every weapon is a hit, every shield is a defense against a hit. You also follow whatever is written on the card. It could say you are allowed to take some of these tokens. They are also hits and defense, keep them with you. If you have more weapons than the defender has shields, then each hit that got through is one damage. Look at the character sheet to see how much damage a figure can take. But as soon as it, uh, it's a hit, you have to place the figure on its side. If the damage is done as much as the figure can take, or even more, then the figure is destroyed and removed from the board. But before the defender has to take damage, that player can first reveal and resolve their card. And then you both deal damage to each other. Keep in mind that you get to decide how to deal out the damage that has been done to you. For example, if you were hit three times, you could say that you take two hits for this one spaceship and one hit for this other spaceship. This is a way to prevent a ship from being destroyed. If after that both players are still in combat, you do this again with the second card. And after that, you play the third and final card. Again, if both players have not been completely annihilated, then whoever has the most of these icons, morale, that player is the winner of the battle. The morale is on the cards, on the dice, but also each figure has a worth of morale. That's written on your character sheet. Look at the rule book for what you have to do to retreat as the losing player. That was the space battle. After that comes the battle on the planet, the ground battle. It goes exactly the same. Count up your strength and take that many dice to roll. And then play up to three combat cards. But before you play your first card, both players can add these flag tokens to the planet. They count as a soldier that can take two damage. The first time they're hit, you flip over the token. When it takes a hit again, you remove it. For the rest, it's exactly the same as a space battle. Two battles in one player's turn can take up some time, so maybe not overthink it too much when there are other people at the table waiting to move on, at least not when it's still very early in the game. One other thing to look up in the rulebook is an orbital strike. That's only an attack, but you only roll dice for that. Because then I can wrap up this long explanation for a very complicated but cool game. A special thanks to the person who sold it to me, 
this really was at the top of my wish list. Anyway, I hope you feel like you have some sense of how it goes and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching this tutorial, feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.